2020 is hindsight. Welcome to PBA at noon. I'm Paul Benwell and I'm joined by my colleague Sophie Caesar. Uh, to, to start off 2021, we thought we'd kick off by bringing you a few of our favorite healthcare and health focused companies uh, that we have been tracking for a while now. The first company we would like to introduce you to is Ortho Regenerative Technologies. They are an emerging orthobiologics company dedicated to the development of novel therapeutic tissue repair technologies. These technologies will dramatically improve the success rate of orthopedic and sports medicine surgeries. Ortho trades on the CSE under the symbol ORTH. They are currently trading in the mid 70 range. Here to explain the technology and tell us what's in the pipeline is CEO uh, Claude Leduc. As always, please ask your questions in the Q&A. And once Claude is done uh, the presentation, we will begin with questions. Uh, bonjour, Claude. Merci beaucoup. Thanks for joining us. And please feel free to start when you wish. So you can see my screen, of course. Yes, perfect. Thank so you perfect. so much. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, to be online today and to uh, listen, of course, to Ortho Regenerative Technologies. Um, we have a novel orthobiologics uh, platform, um, so we will talk about uh, this uh, in detail in the coming slides, of course. I'll try to keep it as uh, easy as possible to understand if you're non-scientific based uh, people. But, uh, so... Okay, all right. So Ortho Regenerative Technologies uh, was um, incorporated in 2015. Um, we are a spin out of Polytechnic Montreal. Uh, Polytechnic Montreal has more than 20 years of, of um, Cartosan science. Cartosan is the uh, polymer that is at the basis of our uh, product and, and platform. Um, we also uh, are public uh, company since 2017. We trade on the SCS as ORTH, of course, and also we just listed onto the OTCQB under ORTIF. Um, the, we raised about $8 million uh, Canadian uh, so far um, in, you know, within the company, but also there was money from the government, you know, about 7.4 million and about uh, a bit Roughly 50% is controlled by founder uh, and also management and board. Uh, technology is based on a FDA designated drug biologics combination product. I'll, I'll describe what it is uh, later and uh, to regenerate new tissue in various musculoskeletal conditions. And we have uh, a you know, large number of applications. The first application is for uh, repair of rotator cuff tear and I'll uh, guide you uh, through, through that. Um, the vision for the company is creating a continuum of value within the orthobiologics technology platform that we have, so, you know, so we have uh, the same technology that can be used for meniscus repair, wound healing, cartilage repair, osteoarthritis, so we want to develop those uh, future indications and as well as looking for other opportunities for uh, outside of our platform, of course, to increase value of the company. And we just did a deal you know, with a uh, company for uh, using their PRP system globally. I'll talk about it later. And we want, of course, to financially secure the company for its long-term long um, uh, achievements, of course, and, and um, uh, uh, milestones uh, delivery, of course. Um, we want uh, to build, of course, the management, uh, you know, as we go and also increase our visibility into the US market uh, uh, for the coming year, we have projects, you know, to increase visibility there. And, um, and eventually, uh, you know, we have that ambition to have a NASDAQ listing in 2021. Uh, and um, that's, that's uh, something that we have in mind. Uh, the platform has uh, multiple um, uh, applications. So the polymer that we use, we can customize it to suit different uh, clinical indication. The first one, the RCT1, is the rotator cuff repair, and that's what we'll mainly talk about today. But also, the same uh, technology uh, can be configured to treat meniscus tear or to osteoarthritis treatment, wound healing, cartilage, and tendinopathies. Um, the market for the soft tissue repair is immense. 
uh, for example, in the three focus um, indication that we have right now. So for example, Rodeducoff tears, you know, 600,000 annual surgeries in the US alone. So if you multiply that by uh, retail price for the product at $1,000, it's, uh, you know, it's a market potential or a market opportunity of 600 million. And for meniscus and cartilage, you know, it's 1.2 million uh, roughly of uh, opportunities per year. So it's uh, more than billion dollar opportunities uh, for um, our indications. What is the clinical opportunity? Clinical opportunity means that, you know, what is the standard treatment for those indications in today's uh, uh, clinic, if you want? Um, for example, in rotator cuff, um, surgery, uh, standard of care surgery is the main treatment for the three uh, indications that we have here. And, but there are a big uh, or large failure rate for each one of, of those. For example, in Rodeducoff, more than, you know, you know, up to 95% failure rate, depending on the tear size that you find um, into uh, each one of the patients. And meniscus, you know, up to 40% failure rate and cartilage uh, up to 35% failure rate. So that's the clinical opportunity that the market uh, wants uh, because there is a, a strong need, of course, for more effective treatments. Imagine an orthopedic surgeon that treats a patient uh, does surgery and for example in the US would cost uh, you know roughly about 25 to 35 thousand dollars for to have a surgery to repair your cough or meniscus or cartilage and then there is a failure so it's a big cost for the system for the reimbursement system big uh, loss of course for the patient that is very uh, annoyed with it and even more uh, also with the surgeon that uh, you know looks uh, a bit uh, um, you know uh, faces um, uh, you know failure of course facing failure is not a nice event for him. So they start, you know, the orthopedic surgeons have started to try to find um, options that would improve those failure rates. And one of them is to use uh, biologics from the human body. And this is what we're going to talk in the coming uh, slides. So orthopedic surgeons are, have started to use platelet-rich plasma. Platelet-rich plasma is essentially a hyperconcentration of your own blood uh, that you have into your, your, your bloodstream. So, um, you know, the, the, how do we prepare that? So preparing the PRP, we, you harvest about 60 uh, cc of, your, of the patient's blood. You spin it into a centrifuge for about eight to 12 minutes. And then you, you get a separations of the blood components, you know, with the erythrocyte, red blood cells on the bottom, white blood cells on the top. But the middle zone is the PRP zone. The PRP zone is very rich in platelets and growth factors and cytokines, all contribute into, um, you know, regenerating new tissues. So that is the uh, options that the orthopedic sur surgeons are using now. But the big uh, problem with using PRP alone uh, you know, together with uh, standard of care surgery, is that if you pour a platelet-rich plasma on the surgical site after you repair it, you know, with anchors and with um, with suture, it does not stay there long. It's washed out very quickly, and it is metabolized within 24 hours. So the short lived time of PRP is a big uh, uh, challenge uh, and and a big um, uh, you know. Um, uh, odds, uh, if you want, um, that uh, the uh, clinical community is facing. So this is where we are coming to fill that gap. And so the technology that we propose is, um, you know, is using or is combining PRP with our polymer. Our polymer is a very unique polymer that we extract from shrimp shells. We call it kytosan. And then we have a proprietary formula. It's a dry form, uh, you know, freeze-dried form uh, that has a long shelf life, uh, you know, for, um, uh, you know, a, you know uh, clinics and hospitals can, can uh, store it uh, for a long time, two years. Um, and then we combine it with the PRP. So PRP is prepared into the OR. You know, for example, if you're a patient with a rotator cuff tear, uh, you are elected for surgery. When you roll into uh, your bed into the OR, the nurse would draw some blood and prepare PRP parallel to the surgery. 
once the surgery is completed, then the nurse will inject the PRP into the valve, shakes the valve for 20 seconds, and then it's ready to be delivered at the site of surgical sites. So that's your shoulder, uh, you know, your tear is repaired with surgery with anchors into the bone with sutures. And then there is still, of course, the open uh, uh, tear, of course, that is there, uh, even if you if you, um, you know, put the, um, the sutures. So you would put your combination of ortho R, you know, including PRP in sight. And the, the combination product is very sticky. And so it sticks in place because of its polycationic uh, uh, configuration. And um, so it would stay there uh, during weeks, you know, up to six weeks. And so this will permit the growth factors into PRP and the cytokines to be slowly delivered and to contribute uh, those growth factors for a longer time than using PRP alone. So it's very uh, clever, very interesting for orthopedic surgeons. They love it because it's easy to do. It is a complement or an adjuvant to standard of care surgery. So you don't, you don't change the surgery per, per se. It's just adding about eight to 10 minutes uh, time of delivering the product uh, on in situ, waiting for coagulation before closing the patient and then uh, having the uh, rehabilitation program for the patient. So the R2R is very, again, unique uh, drug biology combination product. The FDA has stated that um, you know, the polymer is definitively a drug because it interacts with the biologic elements of the PRP. So again, you know, it is mucoadhesive, uh, longer residence time, uh, prevents the, the uh, coagulation of the, of the blood clot to retract. What does it mean just that your implant would stay and cover the whole uh, surgical site for a long time? Uh, it is uh, coagulating, uh, co coagulating uh, rapidly. So the combination of the polymer and, and the PRP coagulates uh, in, within uh, five minutes. And so again, it's easy to use and surgeon likes it, has uh, the capacity to augment and accelerate repair. So that means that the tissue that you repair is mechanically and biologically more viable. And so that's uh, very important. If it is not, it means that it will snap again, it will, uh, it will um, uh, tear again. And so that's again, important, the quality of the tissue. And the product is safe because it degrades over time and in, uh, in a, a very um, uh, releasing, uh, slow release manner. Um, here, I just want to express some uh, animal studies, large animal studies that have been done and that shows or demonstrate the uh, value added of the R2R combination with, with uh, standard of care surgery. So this is at the uh, cell uh, arrangements, normal tendon and, and arrangement um, um, organization, if you want. So it's organized in uh, bundles and cells are elongated. If you look at the middle uh, picture, you see that it is a disorganized tissue. It's, it's fibrous, it's fibrous. So a fibrous tissue that is mainly collagen two instead of collagen one. So the point here is that it is not a mechanically or biologically viable tissue. And that's why there are so many tears uh, in, you know, when you repair without uh, or to R, for example, uh, with just standard of care surgery. And if you add uh, the R to R over standard of care surgery, then you, you find again a organized tissue in bundle and elongated uh, cells. So again, uh, you know, generating a tissue that is more viable. Again, here it's uh, histology uh, pictures. If you're a non-scientist here, I'll just make it very easy to understand. This is normal tissue here on those pictures. The red here is the uh, staining of, uh, you know, to, to show that uh, the glycose and low glycan glycans content, those macromolecules are very important for the physiology of the tissue at the intersection of between your tendon and the bone. So if it's there, it's good. Uh, the repaired from standard of care surgery alone, there's no red, the only red is right here. So it's very um, uh, scarish tissue, not organized tissue versus when we use uh, on top of standard of care surgery, when we use R to R combination, then you find the red again, again, a very stratified and organized tissue showing a very uh, well uh, viable uh, mechanically and biologically tissue. 
we did a more, uh, you know, a pivotal study, um, you know, a huge one, which is GLP, Good Laboratory Practice Study, um, regulated for the FDA uh, submission, of course, of our IND. And it was done by an outside lab uh, called Axel Lab. So independent from the company, independent from the university, 48 sheep, three groups. Again, we what we do is we cut the tendon. Um, you know, this is the IPS, ISP tendon. It's M4 spinatus uh, tendon. Um, and then we do the cut uh, of the tendon and then we do the reattachment here. And then um, of course we have three groups again. Um, so those are normal uh, tissue. Again, you find the red, uh, which is the reflection of the glycosamoglycans here. With or to R, you still find the red, of course, uh, you know, showing a more viable or still a viable uh, tissue that is regenerated versus standard of care surgery alone. It's a disorganized tissue, not much red. Again, it shows the confirmation that uh, the technology is, you know, adding incredible uh, increment in value over standard of care surgery. So the conclusion, of course, is that, um, you know, it decreases the tendon gap. Decreasing tendon gap is that it means that there is more tissue that is generated. Uh, improve a, a shoulder bone structure in its large animal model at three and six months. Um, and then um, there was, you know, no um, issues at all with uh, safety, every uh, testing and histolo it's histopathology that we did on the animals, you know, showed that there was no difference between the control versus the treated group. The regulatory and clinical plan. So again, we are a designated uh, by the FDA drug biologic combination product. Uh, we will submit the IND, it's the demand to submit uh, a investigator, investigative new drug submission uh, in Q1 of 2021. Here there is a mistake, I'm sorry. Um, so it's 2021 that should be here. So this first quarter that we are in right now, we will submit the IND. Um, and then uh, there will be eventually a phase three study, but that would be starting uh, end of 2022. And we are uh, manufacturing the clinical batch uh, to start the study as we speak and will be ready in February. So we shall be able to start enrolling patient in the second quarter of this year. The clinical, the US uh, clinical study that we are um, starting uh, is a um, phase one, two uh, clinical study. So we, you know, it is a prospective. That means that we enroll only uh, new patients. It is randomized, you know, the treatment, uh, the, you know, the, the physician does not decide if he gets the control or the treatment. It's done, uh, you know, in with the computer. It is controlled with uh, standard of care surgery and it's blinded. Uh, that means that the um, assessor and the patient don't know what, they, you know what the patient got so that they can assess uh, you know, very um, ethically uh, the patient. Primary point is safety, secondary end points. We measure pain uh, function of the shoulder and we will take MRI reading of course to look at the structure and we will count the number of retairs. And uh, we also, um, you know, evaluate the patient at six weeks, three, six, 12 months, and we will enroll 25 patients in the standard of care surgery alone and 50 patients into the uh, treated group uh, together with uh, standard of care surgery. In, uh, you know, we will have six to 10 US clinical sites uh, for uh, that study. The portfolio of, of products. So again, we, you know, R2R is our main uh, product that we are, you know, uh, starting into the phase one, two ongoing. Phase three will happen in 2024, and then market approval somewhere between 2024 and 2025. Meniscus, we already you know, meniscus cartilage and uh, tendon. Uh, well, those two we have completed development. Um, and here we will um, start to do a animal study for meniscus uh, this year. And then uh, cartilage, you know, we already did some um, uh, animal studies, but we'll do another one uh, to complete the one that we did. It was a pilot here, we'll do a pivotal and then other uh, means uh, we will develop as we go. Um, here, 
Bon, it's very crowded slide, of course, just to let you know that, you know, we achieved tons of milestones uh, in the past uh, few years, uh, you know, in the animal studies that are completely uh, finished uh, with uh, R2R, of course, for the, for the rotator cuff. Uh, manufacturing, you know, we again completed all the, um, uh, you know, the engineering batch and then we're, uh, you know, producing the GMP batch. Regulatory, of course, we got the designation, and then we will submit the IND and then uh, have the approval of the IND eventually to start the clinical trial. So that's the phase one. Uh, um, that's the, um, yeah, that's the IND uh, approval, sorry, to start the um, uh, clinical trial here, and then, uh, you know, to complete it uh, somewhere at the end of 2022 uh, or early 2023. And here, I just wanted to express that those uh, milestones that we have here are, you know, major uh, value inflection points, you know, each one of them puts the company at a value that is uh, greater than what it is uh, at the moment. Um, we announced uh, last week that we did um, uh, sign a global deal with Hanuman, uh, so for its uh, PRP system. So as you understood, uh, you know, the R2R, the polymer that we have needs to be combined with the biologics, uh, which is the PRP. Um, PRP again is extracted from the patient's autologous blood, but it is a device that separates uh, the PRP from the leukocytes and the erythrocytes. And this little device, many orthopedic companies have this uh, small device. So we uh, did an agreement with Hanuman to become their global uh, use uh, distributor for their system in conjunction with the soft tissue repair indication that we have. So what does it mean? It means that we have a fully integrated uh, combination product. So we have the PRP system as well as the drug uh, slash biologic, of course, which is R2R with the PRP. And then we can generate revenues on top of the revenues that we generate from the product. So it is a, um, a very good uh, deal that we got. So we can sub-license any company in any country to use that system in combination with our product. And um, so again, it puts us in a very good uh, shape uh, to uh, future licensing deals. We work with the best of the best in their field here just to show that uh, you know, we use a, the best uh, clinical research organization to run the US clinical trial, MECRA. They're based in Washington, DC. They have a regulatory group that we work with uh, you know, to submit to the FDA. Uh, and then product is manufactured in Montreal by the same company that is manufacturing a, a first generation product um, based on Kytosan. So again, they have the expertise to work with the, our molecule. And we work with the best universities and groups uh, to advance our R&D or clinical uh, programs. Uh, the organization is lean, but yet very efficient. So, you know, all the R&D is performed at Polytechnic Montreal. So the team under Professor, Professor Mark Laver too, uh, you know, we pay a monthly um, a fee and they, we have four labs and uh, tons of uh, scientists in there that are advancing our uh, programs uh, for future indications. And the r our team, uh, you know, is uh, again, um, very knowledgeable and uh, we can share, uh, you know, some of our systems companies resources on top of those names here where uh, you know, when it is needed and our uh, sister company is Valeo Pharma so there are resources that we can use again to limit the uh, red tape uh, or the spending uh, based on um, HR uh, at the moment. Um, the board, of course, you can see it on the internet so I won't describe it but just to let you know that this team here has closed more than, you know, more than a billion dollar in uh, licensing deals and as well as more than a billion dollar in financing. So very experienced board. Uh, and we even have you know, two original scientists that were at Polytechnic Montreal and started the lab there 20 years ago. Now they're in the US, but still um, you know, uh, with us uh, on the board and, uh, and helping the company to advance. And then uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, a clinical advisory board, uh, best of the best in their field, you know, Jack Farr, in one of the biggest name in the US for the knee, Scott Radio, one of the biggest name for the shoulder, and Martin and Jack Twegg, uh, you know, for shoulder and knees, you know, in UK and, and Canada. 
um, financing needs for these uh, ongoing programs. That's say, you know, uh, for the fiscal year 21, 23. Um, so it's roughly about $10 million. Some of the money was already uh, raised. You know, we announced that we raised 3 million more uh, early de December, but um, you know, here uh, we, you know, there are some debenture to pay back to venture are in the money. So we feel that it will be converted, but we need to make provision for that. And this is the uh, salaries. And then we have Polytechnic uh, Montreal um, the, the fees that we pay, and then uh, manufacturing of uh, some future batch, and then preclinical animal studies for the meniscus, so roughly $10 million, uh, and we already raised $3 million of that. Uh, the or to our TI cap table, um, you know, if there are any questions, you know, I can answer the, those questions at the end and I'll put out uh, that picture. But roughly we have, uh, you know, 26 million uh, shares uh, outstanding right now and uh, about 1 million, um, well, we have tons you know, some warrants, of course, but if you look at the fully diluted, uh, including the warrants, it's about 66 million um, uh, shares and at 100% uh, the fully dilution, full dilution. And, um, and some of the warrants can generate, of course, uh, some uh, money uh, revenues for, for the company. Uh, m and transactions, you know, between 1.7 billion and the smallest one that we have uh, here is 107 million. But just to let you know that it is a very uh, busy m and market in that field. And, uh, and we feel that we will be uh, uh, subject to um, uh, a target, you know, from of the, uh, one of the big orthopedic ones uh, eventually. So that is the overview. I'll just stop here so that I have time to answer uh, your questions. And um, so again, uh, we have significant market uh, uh, need uh, filling, um, you know, proprietary technology. We have IP, of course, three family of, uh, of uh, patents. Um, business model is uh, is uh, very uh, smart, and then um, you know we have tons of value creation milestone that are coming, and uh, an exit potential for investors. You know both on the open market, as well as eventually you know with uh, potential M and transactions. Well, thank you very much, Claude. That was uh, a fantastic presentation. Um, we seem to not be seeing your video. Maybe you could just start it and restart it so I can ask you uh, the questions and everybody can have an opportunity to see you answer those. Yes. Okay, very good. Yes. Perfect. There you are. Okay. Good. That's much better. <laughs> um, so I invite everybody to ask questions. We have a couple already. Um, how much competition do you have currently? Are there, is there any competition? Who is your competition? Yes. So right now the competition is, is limited to what we call um, patches. Uh, those are allograph allo 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 patches. Um, so some of those patches are used to wrap the tendon and those are uh, collagen patches. And so they wrap uh, the tendon and then they sew it together with uh, the anchorage. And so it is a short-term mechanical uh, option. Uh, they claim that some of the patches can release some growth factors, uh, but the literature is not very um, good on uh, the outcomes. So that is one of the uh, competitors. Others are preparing some product. Uh, it is mainly cell-based uh, product uh, that they need. Uh, for example, one company is harvesting a PRP and they denature uh, the PRP to get rid of uh, uh, potential uh, infection or cross-infection. And then they keep only a few growth factors. And one of the future uh, indication they will have is bone repair and soft tissue repair. But this is not out into, into the market before 2020. 25 and uh, and those are very complicated processes and whereas what we use is the prp from the the young patient so it is autologous prp and it is harvested into the or so there is no complicated uh, manufacturing process of cells mm -hmm. or processing of cells again uh, keeping the affordability of the treatment and uh, again uh, you know maximizing uh, the uh, the growth factors of the young patients so there is no reject and very minimal uh, uh, potential for infection. Of course. Um, another question here, can you add biological to existing PRP treatment without the surgery? 
Um, no, because, um, well, you know, maybe uh, in very tiny tears, small tears, mm -hmm. maybe uh, some orthopedic surgeons are, you know, throwing some uh, injecting PRP alone there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is like a wound, you know, if you cut your skin, uh, there is a limit uh, of your skin, you know, to create repair. Yeah. If it's too large, that's why we do sutures, and uh, and or you take uh, oh, you know course. a plaster that will uh, you know put your skin put back together. Yeah. Yep. Then, but you know the the big challenge with soft tissue, those tissue are not very well vascularized. So that's why, for example, cartilage is white, uh, mm. meniscus. The two thirds of the meniscus is white. Uh, the tendons, when you you know buy a piece of meat and you see tendon, it's transparent, and the yeah. rest of the meat is red. Of course, it's transparent because there is very little blood vessels. It's only micro uh, blood vessels that are there. So that lack of blood supply is the whole challenge for those to repair, and that's why you need to come out with uh, you know very clever uh, solutions, as such as uh, using you know uh, the patient's own um, PRP. Uh, you know, growth factors and cytokines to repair it. And um, so that's why uh, it is, um, it is the, um, uh, one of the clever solutions, yes. Um, does Medicare cover the cost or would Medicare cover the cost? Yes, Medicare, Medicaid uh, would both uh, cover the cost eventually. And that's, uh, you know, of course, it is a, um, a costly and long process for the marketer. Um, and that's why, uh, you know, the aim of the company is to find a major company that will be uh, distributing and marketing the product uh, in most uh, regions of the world. It could be a global deal with one of the big orthopedic companies. It could be a regional deal with someone in North America, someone in Europe and someone for rest of the world. Uh, but here is, uh, you want to have the best partner that has very deep pockets to have the, uh, of course, a cash and human resources yeah. to maximize your product launch and to uh, have it out, uh, you know, uh, in in a broader uh, way, uh, fashion. Of course, good idea. Um, are you fully patented? We are fully patented. We have three family of patents, and we uh, we bought the patents from the university, so we control one hundred percent of our patents, and we're still producing uh, new patents as we go. And um, you know, we're developing new applications or new versions of uh, the technology for osteoarthritis, for example. And we will be uh, developing. Uh, we are developing new patent uh, on uh, as as we go in our development process. Excellent. Um, can you discuss the failure rate with normal procedures and, and what's your success rate? So how does ortho compare to uh, the, what's currently the success rate? Yes. So, of course, the only reference we have right now, we don't have any patients. Um, so it's only animals. And um, so that success rate, you know, um, is important, um, you know, to show. Um, you know, we have shown statistical difference between the control and, um, and the treated group. Um, what is challenging in animals is that, for example, the best animal uh, to mimic uh, human physiology is the goat or the sheep. And um, so that's why all orthopedic companies or, or um, research centers are using those, uh, one of the, the two uh, uh, animals uh, for their studies. Uh, the challenge is that the animal, you do surgery and 20 minutes after they are in a cage on yeah. uh, bearing on their feet. And so, and they move in the cage, they don't move much, but they move. So again, that is against uh, the performance the of doctor's your- Doctor's orders, yeah. <laughs> yes. When you are a patient, we immobilize your shoulder for two weeks. So again, that gives uh, time for the injected uh, product you know, to work. And so the rehab program is very uh, strict and <clears throat> very controlled. And so the, you know, when we have uh, human uh, results, of course, it will be easier, of course, to show the differences between the two. But we showed very clearly that, uh, you know, at three months and six months, uh, we got, um, you know, faster and better tissue repair in our uh, large animal studies, which is the uh, standard, of course, in, uh, in uh, animal research. And um, so that's, the, that's uh, how I can express it today. Um, we talked about it being covered by Medicare and Medicaid, but um, would it be covered by insurance as, as well? 
Yes, third-party insurance, of course, are uh, you know would be probably the at least fifty percent, if not more, of the uh, reimbursement uh, procedures. Uh, the beauty of using uh, MCRA, our U.S. Clinical Research Organization, it's a fully integrated uh, group with regulatory um, uh, groups with reimbursement groups. So we do well in advance all the reimbursement plan, all the health economic data that we will gather to use uh, together you know, with third party payers to justify the economic viability of adding a thousand dollar or two thousand dollar or three thousand dollar cost on top of the standard of care surgery and to show you know, the savings that they will do if, for example, you reduce by 50% your failure rate, you know, the cost of, yes. uh, of the failure rate is a way, way more than the cost of the product itself. Um, and so speaking of cost, what are the costs of the studies and do you have any sponsorship from anyone? Yes, so the cost of the US phase one, two study that we do is roughly $5 million Canadian or 3.7 million US. And so that's the cost for those 75 patients. Um, the sponsor. Um, we have an agreement, um, so the deal that we did with Hanuman, uh, they provide, of course, the PRP systems for us, and um, so that's uh, if you want uh, the partnership that we have, but uh, technically, uh, for the moment, uh, we pay for those, uh, those costs ourselves through uh, various financings that we did uh, recently, and, and future ones, you know, to continue uh, all the programs. Um, who are your main shareholders and how much does management own? Yes, so um, the main shareholder of the company is, um, is the founder of the company, uh, Steve Saviak, and his holding company called Manitex. So um, right now I feel that he probably owns about um, 22, 23% of the company. Um, there are also um, the university and the uh, original uh, scientist, um, uh, you know, Michael Bushman and Caroline. And so the university roughly owns about, uh, I would uh, say, roughly probably 15% of the company. I'll just check my numbers here. I have them here. Just a second. I don't want to say uh, silly things. Um, so yeah, Polygroup is 26%, uh, Steve uh, Saviak and Mentex 19%, and management 7.2%. And so the float is roughly uh, 60%. Okay. Um, and this is an interesting que question, and I'm guessing the answer would probably be yes, but your products, could they be used for veterinarian procedures if you're testing on animals, I'm guessing? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're... You're smart because uh, I want to share with you and everyone. Um, Hanuman did approach us uh, by, you know, um, uh, knowing about us, you know, through um, interests, of course, mutual interests. But Hanuman has a veter veterinary veterinarian distributor. I'm sorry, I have difficulty to to say it in, in Okay, so do I. <laughs> a vet a vet distributor will be easier. So uh, they're you know deeply involved in that field. So the, we were approached uh, to license them the, um, the 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 usage of our technology into the vet market. And but we I spin it uh, completely. I said no here yeah, I want you to be involved in our um, uh, human business of course. Uh, you know, we, we made that deal, that global deal that I just mentioned, but yes, there is absolutely uh, interest into the vet business. Um, it, it, it could be, it is not as large of a market as it is for human and uh, for, um, you know, cost reasons, and, uh, but uh, it, it, we could be involved in that field also eventually with them. Interesting. Yes. So if we, oh, we just, uh, if we have no more questions uh, from the audience, uh, I'm sure Paul would like to ask a question. So just one more question. Um, what are your plans for NASDAQ listing? listing uh, how and when do you plan to get there? Well, so, you know, we have multiple U.S. investment banks that are approaching us for being, you know, our um, sponsor. You no, know, sponsor, if you want, and, 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 um, and the... Um, uh, my God, how to come on, Julie. Um, uh, 
uh, the, 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 the advisor, if you want, for future financing, of course. And um, so we, we are talking to multiple of them and, and we're going to make a selection uh, sooner than later. And, um, you know, the aim, of course, is, um, you know, to market the company very deeply in the U.S. before getting to the NASDAQ listing. So, um, you know, we are also hiring a U.S. IR firm where we will do uh, roadshows in the U.S., of course, to market the company before uh, we do the listing so that whenever we are ready to do the listing, the value would be uh, higher and people will be uh, already knowing us uh, very nicely. And we have so many material milestones that are coming in the coming weeks and months uh, that, uh, you know, naturally with those milestones, the value will increase, the buzz will be there. We want to be on the radar of all the, you know, invest US investors, of course, Canadian investors, of course, uh, too. And, um, and so that we can be uh, ready and, and hopefully a new darling on the uh, NASDAQ listing eventually. Excellent. Darling company, yes. <laughs> uh, Paul, do you want to go ahead and ask a couple of questions? One question just pop, uh, just popped up, so I'll ask that. It's uh, is there a link between uh, Biosyntech Technologies and Ortho? Yeah. So the link is the um, scientists that have developed uh, the Kytosan based technology. So Biosyntech um, technology was BSC car gel which was developed at the same laboratory at Polytechnic Montreal under Dr. Bushman and Herman's uh, guy, uh, leadership, if you want. And so that was the first generation product that was developed in the uh, end of 1990s and 2000s, early 2000s. And this product was sold to uh, Smith & Nephew and is marketed by Smith & Nephew in about 40 countries at the moment. So that's the first generation. Patents are, by the way, expired. Um, this technology was using whole blood instead of PRP. So again, just to remind your auditors, um, uh, audience that, um, you know, PRP is a hyper concentration of growth factors. You have those growth factors in your blood, but into a concentration that is not necessarily as impactful as you would with a hyper concentration in PRP. And um, so that's the main difference, uh, or the, that's the history uh, behind it. And, uh, and the new technology, the new version uh, of the product uh, is a more um, viable uh, uh, polymer, if you want, which is a dry form, lyophilized form, long shelf life, two years instead of six months. And, um, and again, it is soluble with PRP, which the first generation was not. And so, and it, it coagulates within five minutes instead of about half an hour for the, the other generation. So my point here is that it is an improved and better uh, second generation product uh, that is, uh, yes, into the market now, and eventually into the market or in development. Yeah. Great. Um, and any other questions, Paul, before we wrap up? No, I think it's, uh, <clears throat> Claude, this is a fantastic story. We've had a lot of questions for you. Uh, we can maybe, if we have some more, we can follow up with you or send them to you. We can get the people together and you can answer them. Much appreciated. Great story. I uh, can't wait for you to really get out there in the market. And I'm glad to hear that you can take care of pets. So that's a good <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people that were thinking about that. So that was a good question. Uh, again, thank you so much for, uh, for today. Much appreciated. And uh, thank you to every, everyone for attending. Uh, there's a lot of people work behind the scenes with Sophie and I. Uh, there's Nick and there's Cal. So we're working hard to bring you some good stories. So everyone take care, be safe, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for well, having thank us. You thank, thank you again. Thank you for again. having us so much. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, have a good day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.